Welcome back to the sweatshop boys and girls. Today we are working on this 2010 Dodge Grand Caravan. What we are doing on the caravan is we are replacing the starter motor. Now I've already gone ahead and diagnosed this thing and I'm going to tell you a bit about how to diagnose it on the bench here as well as on the vehicle. Now there are a few common issues that I've noticed with the caravans or Chrysler products in general that basically you want to check before you call it a starter motor. The first thing you're going to want to do is of course inspect your starter after you go ahead and try to start it. If you don't hear any clicks at all, most times the culprit's going to be this guy here. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that the starter is bad, but it does mean potentially that you may have a broken wire. Sometimes I have seen the solenoid wire, which is a thin little wire, corrode out. So you got to have to check that thing for signal. And I'll show you how to do that with a power probe. Uh, also, you want to check the big wire here. Sometimes those corrode away. It's not very common on this model as far as I know, but I don't do too many of these Chrysler products anymore because I try to steer my customers away from them but unfortunately the caravan it is you know the cheapest minivan out there so if you are a mechanic you will see this thing from time to time nonetheless after you've checked that wire there is also another ground wire that you will see it's on the top bolt of your starter motor sometimes it may look like it's attached but they corrode internally and it makes your life quite a bit of a challenge because you may have a ground if you test the ground at the engine to see if there's ground there and you know the only way to really test that is to take a jumper cable run it from your battery to your engine and make sure that you don't have a ground for the particular starter motor that we have what's happened is is that guy there has completely severed because of the amount of electricity that's going through it essentially as the wires corrode uh you you have a lot of amperage coming through just a few strands and then it essentially melts it and because of the salt and crap that's what causes most times these starter to fail. But it is important to check the ground and the connections to the starter because we have had that happen quite a bit in my shop where uh, we'll get cars that come in for a starter that was diagnosed as a starter by another shop and you know, it sometimes isn't the starter. Most times it is though. Of course, before I go any farther with today's video, do me a big favor, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you never miss one of my new videos. Now, let's dive in a little bit deeper. Essentially, with your hood open, you want to look for obvious signs of crap. And you can see that we have a few signs that may lead you to believe that you have some issues that tissues won't solve. Like, for instance, we have a battery that is not the correct battery for this car. When you see things like that, it is very important to determine two things. Whether someone has made a boo-boo in installing the battery or, you know, potentially put the wires in a way that's going to chase them and eventually wear them through because that can cause a no-start condition as well. Obviously, we don't have that issue right now. The second thing you'd want to do is to verify that you have good ground. So, like I was saying earlier, what I usually do, and I've had this with a few Chrysler products, mainly on the older pickup trucks where they just don't have a starter alive at all. It, it's a no-start condition, and guys have installed starters in hopes that I will fix it, and it never usually does. Of course, everything appears to work properly, everything on the body side, that is, but your engine is non-existent because your starter won't go so you know replacing the starter is just going to be a waste of money but what you want to do take your jumper cable from the ground side to the engine make sure you get a good ground and then try to fire it up obviously if it fires up your starter's still good if it doesn't then crawl underneath the car and inspect the starter that's generally what i do with most cars in this situation we had a bit of an oil leak so the most important thing especially if you hear a little bit of a sound from the starter check the engine to make sure the thing actually rotates i've had all kinds of stories over the years where you know a customer said he drove a car home and and, you know, I don't know how he must have drove it because the lifters were completely trashed in this thing. I've had people say, you know, it had oil when I checked it and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, all sorts of stuff. So if you are a technician, definitely do yourself a favor and just double check yourself. Even though people say that, yeah, you know, it was running and all this stuff. Don't take their word for it because you don't want to be that mechanic who installs a starter and then finds out it doesn't do anything because your engine seized. So your second step would be crawl underneath this thing, pull a little side cover off which i did already and verify that the engine turns that doesn't mean that the engine's any good but at least you know it'll spin obviously once you've completed all these steps and you have a secure battery you have a secure connection to the battery and you have ground and all that sort of stuff it's time 
to crawl underneath this bad boy because Chrysler, in all of its wisdom, you know, put the starter in a rather stupid place. Uh, now, it's not that it's impossible to get to, but it is a bit of a pain in the ass to show you how to get to it. So I'm going to take my camera off the tripod and I'll try to get you an angle of what it looks like down there. Unfortunately, as most of you folks out there will probably know, I am a one-man show if you have watched my videos in the past. And this is the second car today that I am doing on the floor because I don't have the manpower to push this hunk of crap out and then back in. So this is a long day for me because I hate working on the floor. It sucks. So yeah. Anyhow, let's crawl underneath this pile of crap and uh, yeah, I'll see you back soon. Now I can't really show you how I jack it up uh, or where I jack it up from because it's a pain in the ass to get the camera underneath there, but I will show you it once I get the stupid thing up in the air. Essentially that big cradle that is the subframe is where I jack the stupid thing up from. Make sure if you're doing this on the floor like I am you employ the use of jack stands because the pancake effect is not really something that's in I don't think it ever was in um, neither is death it's not fun so yeah don't don't be stupid and die because you're trying to save some money begin jacking holy crap yeah the older you get the harder this shit gets Get it up as far as you like. Uh, the criteria is that the front bumper clears your beer gut. Now you can see there where I've jacked it up, basically on the subframe, right over there. And there is where I'm gonna put my jack stand. You can see that there. And now we're just gonna slowly lower it down. Now, our jack is fully released and we're on the jack stand, so we're good to go. You can put one on the opposite side, but yeah, you know, whatever. I'm not looking for more work. Now this would be much easier to film if it was on my hoist, like the previous car that I did. Unfortunately, it is my luck today that uh, I've got to do this on the floor. This here is, of course, our starter. And that there is our issue. You can see the wire is severed. This here is the wire that we're going to have to break loose. Now remember, this one here is the positive wire, which means that it is hooked up to our batteries. Before you go ahead and take this whole stupid contraption apart, it is very important that you go ahead and take off your battery. Okay, so why the hell are you showing me this, Jimmy? Well, I'll tell you, over here is the bottom bolt for our starter. It is a 15 mil. Now, I think the process is from the factory that you gotta remove this computer and all this shit. I'm not doing that. We have small tools that'll get in there we'll be able to get that stupid bolt out without crying ourselves to sleep. There's also a bolt on the top side here. You can see the top bolt there. I think there is supposed to be another one right there, but there isn't on this car. So if I can find one, we'll replace it. If not, we'll stick with two. In front of that 15 mil bolt is a 13 mil nut that basically holds the ground wire. So we're going to have to remove all that crap in order to get to our starter bolts. It's a 10 mil just crank it loose. Only do the negative cable. You don't need to touch the positive. Now we can go ahead and touch that starter. Oh my God, I'll tell you. The hardest part of this job is recording it. Jesus. Grab a 13 mil, sneak it onto this guy here. Okay, I was about to say, I thought it wasn't a 13 for a minute. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, okay, so there you go. Proof's in the pudding. This is the fucking hardest part, is recording it. <sighs> Hopefully it gets loose like mine is. And then just peel it off by hand. Okay, get that bolt out of there and your stupid cable. And now 
I'll try my best to get you a shot of the 13 mil on the other side. Now that rusty looking nut that is on the front of the 50 mil on the top bolt of the starter is basically what you want to remove. So I'm gonna go do this from the top because there's no possible way I can get it from the bottom. But I can't actually film it from the top because, you know, Kaiser put all the rest of the crap in front of it. So yeah. Okay, there we go. Okay. See? Success, right? Oh, man, the things I do for YouTube. I pull the stupid ground cable off. Okay. Now get yourself a 15 mil and take this stupid thing off. Now, I'm not saying this is a hard job. It's just a bit of a stupid design. But, I mean, really, what isn't a stupid design by Chrysler most times? See if my flex socket is deep enough to get on this. Are you? Oh, I love you, Snap On! Okay. Get. Now, don't fucking lose the bolt behind this stupid thing. Here. Uh, don't drop it on the camera now, Jimmy. Okay, there we go. Success. All right, eh, I mean, it's not hard. Uh, you just got to deal with stupid crap. Now, luckily, we only have the one bolt left. A 3 8 drive 15 mil shallow socket will do the trick. Just fit that guy in there and then crank it loose. Now, the reason why I did the top bolt and I would have done that middle bolt first and this one last is because this guy here, if you don't do it, is going to basically butt up against the transmission, which will make your life a pain in the rear end which nobody nobody wants so yeah of course this would be easier if i weren't recording it because currently my ratchet is about to collide with my camera so i can't get a full swing but don't worry you folks at home won't have this issue well it seems relatively loose so i may get my my handy dandy twist ratchet and see if i can get it to oh it's starting to lean let's see if we can Twist it out by hand, eh? Yeah, not a fucking chance. That was wishful thinking. Okay, so I got my twist ratchet. Basically, you do the handle and she does a rotation of the good kind. So. There we go. Okay. I'm a big believer in tools because they make your life so much easier. Now what's happening here is I am walking the starter back. So essentially as I pull the bolt out, what I'm doing is pushing the starter with my right hand back towards the oil filter area away from the transmission. That way my ratchet doesn't bottom out against the transmission because that would suck. We're going to switch arms here because after you do a job like this, and it's the end of the day, the arms feel like lead. So, I don't know what an arm weighs on average. I guess maybe 20, 30 pounds. I feel like 150 pounds at this time in the day. It's currently 7 o'clock, boys and girls. Or 7.30, maybe even later. I don't know. I'm just wishful thinking. Alright. We are off of it. So now we'll pull the starter out. Fucking designs this shit, man. There we go. Piece of garbage. Now, let's get this whole thing out. Now, important, on the starter, on Chrysler's, because they're such quality build, they have a shim, this stupid thing here. Do not, I repeat, do not lose the shim. Uh, it would appear as though if there was a bolt, it wasn't utilized or used for some time, because you can see there how nice and clean it is. That means there's pressure. That means there's pressure applied in that section. And over here, it's just nice and grimy, which means there is no pressure applied. And look, yeah, oil leak, yay. Chrysler, baby! So, keep that shim on there. Do not lose it. You can leave the bolt in there. There's really no point to take it out. 
As you can see, we have our two starters on the bench. It is very important that you can pair both starters to make sure that you have the right starters. Most American manufacturers, even though you may have, say, a Dodge Caravan or a Grand Caravan, there in this year alone was three different options of motor. And you don't want to have the wrong starter delivered to you because the parts guy wasn't that good at his job. Do yourself that favor before you try and chuck the thing in. Some of them do look really similar, so you can make mistakes. Mistakes. The best way to measure these things up is to measure them from flange to flange. Look at the motor, make sure this front portion of the flange is basically the same. Obviously, you know, the offset here of this hole, if there is an offset, you know, just the general characteristics, want to make sure that they match up. That being said, once you're confident, you can take this pile of junk back to your rebuilder so they can rebuild it. Or if you bought a new one, you can take your torch to it, burn the shit, or just smash it with a hammer and take out some of the stress that this piece of junk has caused you. Now, before you go ahead and put your starter in, you can see this section here is slightly machined and will fit into a little section on the transmission. So do yourself a favor, put a little bit of grease on this section here. And my starter guy is pretty good and likes to grease the hell out of everything. So luckily we have enough grease just on our terminal here that we can add it to the front of our starter we're just looking to grease the machine section here you can also put a little bit around the lip of the starter here so that that flange never gets stuck on it and the last thing that i'll tell you that is most important if you got yourself a rebuilt starter and you don't know the rebuilder make sure you test this thing on the bench if you don't know how to test it get someone to show you how to test it ah oh, damn it now i gotta test it son of a bitch <sighs> Okay, well, I'll also show you how to test this stupid thing. So, as I was saying, make sure you test it to make sure that the starter is good because I have had bad rebuilders in the past and luckily over the last... I don't know, it's been closer to like 15 years. The folks that I do deal with now are pretty good. We've only ever had two issues. One was actually recent with an alternator that failed. So, you know, they have a pretty good track record. Hook up your jumper cables to a battery that you have or your own battery on your car, it doesn't really matter. Just make sure you're very careful. What you're going to do is now take the ground of the one side and hook it up to your starter like so make sure it's not going to come into contact with any moving parts then what you're going to do is take the positive wire the positive cable and you're going to hook it up on this big guy here okay so you can see the back of the starter there and now we're going to complete the circuit with this ground cable on the battery itself. I should zoom out because no one can actually see what the hell I'm doing. Now, hopefully this makes a bit more sense to you. You can see I've got my positive lead here. I've got my ground lead here. They're hooked up to the battery itself up top here. So we have a completed circuit. Now, all we need to do to complete the starting circuit or the solenoid, which will actuate our starter, is connect this lead here to this here. So all you're gonna do is take this little, just a jumper of any sort, stick it here, and then close the circuit by touching it. There you can see we have a good starter and a little bit of corrosion here on either one because it didn't make such a great connection, but there you go. That's how you test a starter. Now, <laughs> if you connect your clamps in this fashion and you have a spark, well, your starter is no good. Remove that shit and call the uh, supposed rebuilder and ask him uh, what the hell's going on because that shit's not the way it's supposed to work. Uh, obviously, that clicking was the starter gear. Uh, engaging we'll get that on camera for you boys and girls at home so you can see exactly what's happening every time you start up your car basically this guy here throws out in this direction and connects with your flywheel yeah if you're like me and the little kid inside right now is thinking to yourself, wow, that is fucking cool. Well, yeah, that's, yeah, that's primarily how I got sucked into being a mechanic. And now look at me. So it's not that damn cool. Anyhow, we have a good starter and I'll see you back soon. Okay, we are now, you know, stumped with the awesome task of fitting that stupid starter back in there. Uh, usually it's not really hard at all. It's usually quite easy when it's on a goddamn hoist. But uh, yeah. You guys are getting the at home in my goddamn barn edition of uh, Jimmy's Auto Clinic. Now, grab the starter. You're going to sneak the nose of the starter in first into that big hole. 
and there you go it's pretty much it use the cable to support the stupid thing from the back so it doesn't fall out on your head and now we'll move our attention to the opposite side what's going to happen now is i'm going to thread the the bolt in by hand that bottom bolt and i'm going to work the starter back and forth like this uh, as i need to in order to catch it properly because the starter naturally wants to sag like so which is not going to help our purpose with the bolt hopefully that makes sense to you okay i think the first thing you should do is if you've ever prepared yourself to work on a car on the floor the most important thing boys and girls is to make sure that your neck muscles are strong because jesus christ are they going to get a workout oh yeah now we've caught it i'm just going to try and do it up by hand as much as possible because it's actually much easier to do that than it is to freaking get the ratchet in there and play with it it's not fun enough of that crap grab a handy dandy ratchet and uh oh yeah it's it's after eight boys and girls so we've got the freshway raceway alive and well now remember we're not gonna snug it up uh we're just trying to get it close by so that way we can get our starter in to position and also we can fit in our top bolt because if you tighten the stupid thing up and it's off and not aligned properly, you're never going to get that top bolt in. Now it's starting to get a little bit tight or just close to snugging up the starter. Got a little bit of flex there. And now, oh, give me back my ratchet. There we go. Next step, that top bolt that is impossible for me to film. Okay, I'm going to go up top now and... Thread that stupid bolt in. Wish me luck. I'm also going to use this 3 8 flex socket. It's a 15 mil. It'll make my life considerably easier. Jesus. Yeah. What the fuck am I doing? I don't know. Yeah. Part of the uh, whole process of being a mechanic is uh, finding holes in the dark. It's definitely uh, not the funnest of uh, jobs some days. And I'm not complaining in this sense. This actually is a fairly easy job. It's not hard. It just takes some time and you gotta know what to do and what not to screw up. Now, I can fit a gun in there so I don't really, I don't really care to use my ratchet because I'm getting old. With your gun, you can go ahead and run it up. Now, of course, it is time to go ahead and torque our starter. And the proper torque for this stupid thing is 35 foot-pounds, 35.5 foot-pounds to be exact, or 47 newton meters. Now, one thing is for sure, if you have the same engine, the 3.3 liter, it doesn't matter whether you have a six-speed or whether you have the four-speed, the torque is exactly the same. I think it's actually the same for the 3.8 liter as well as the 4 liter, but I'm not 100% sure. I don't remember and I didn't write it down. So go ahead and check it out for your car. Same torque for the bottom bolt. Okay. Same torque for the bottom bolt as the top one. Really thought that was going to be the last pull, fucker. Oh! Well, let's go ahead now and do the power cable, and then we'll do the ground cable afterwards. Now, you can use the old bolt or the new bolt. It really doesn't matter. We're going to use the new one because the washer on the old one is nice and seized. And, you know, nobody's got time for cleaning up an old bolt. Thread this guy on by hand, of course. Do not put it on with power tools. You should never put on a bolt with power tools unless you're super skilled. Now set your torque wrench to 10.5 foot-pounds or 14.5 newton meters. I don't know why Chrysler was specific to the point of the 0.5, but they were, so I'm passing it along to you guys at home. 
Now definitely follow the torque spec for this guy because a lot of guys will, will reef on this bolt just because it's a bigger bolt than they're used to and they'll crack or damage the plastic here on the starter which is terrible. With this guy here it is important whenever you're testing this guy what you want to do because this particular Chrysler has an auto fire. What that means is when you go to start it it will continuously cycle the starter until the engine starts to run for up to 10 or 15 seconds I can't remember what it is but it makes it nice when diagnosing because essentially you're gonna stick your test light or your power probe on this end and the other end will be to the ground if it's a test light and your power probe makes that uh, quite easy because it eliminates the need for guesswork with regards to whether you left it on the positive side or the negative side and you'll see it light up if you have a signal for the test light and make a sound if you have a power probe and that's pretty much how you test this guy of course I have have tested it off camera and that's how I came to the diagnosis that this thing was a pile of crap now stick it back on the starter on the new starter make sure you get a good connection there's no crap or crud what's going on here with my connection bud she ain't happening why uh oh not getting this guy in properly well nope there is nothing wrong with it it's just not so good of the quality and we're gonna line it up with my right arm here why don't you want to cooperate there we go Fuck pile of crap. All right, now, with your connector firmly on there, we can go ahead now, put our battery back on, lower this pile of crap, and start it up. And inspect for other problems, because the customer has complained about it. So I can see there's a whole host of crap underneath here that she's not gonna like. Uh, there's an oil pan that looks like it's about to bleed all of its oil out any minute and whatnot. But anyhow, okay, I shall be back. Now for you folks at home, you can go ahead and lower the stupid thing, but I can't because in order for me to film putting on that stupid ground cable, which is the same torque as the positive cable, I need to have the car up, which, you know, whatever. Of course, I'm gonna be using a 13 mil flex, uh, this guy here, and an extension to get the stupid thing on with the gun because I'm not running it up. Get the stupid ground cable, push it into place, grab the nut, thread it on by hand, and then get your gun in there with a 13 mil and give her. Give her 10.5 foot pounds, boys and girls. Looks like we have a little bit of corrosion. Well, I don't know about you boys and girls at home, but that looked like 10.5 foot-pounds to me. I can't give you the thumbs up, but I'm doing it up here. And now we must place the jack into place in order to lift the vehicle off of the jack stand. And then we will lower the rusty bucket. God, this thing's such a heavy pile of shit. Remember, Lower it slowly, do not let it slam down. That's not good for your jack or the suspension. And you definitely don't want it to bottom out and damage something. That's a success, eh? That doesn't sound like boring. <laughs> thumbs up, eh? Does he even do thumbs up? I don't think so. High five! That's gonna be covered up with a goddamn GIF. Battery time. There is no torque spec that I know of for this. I haven't looked it up. Uh, essentially, just don't tighten it too tight because you'll screw it up. Just make sure you can't twist it like so because that means it's still loose. With our battery tight, we can go ahead and try and start this bucket. As you can hear, it has other issues that uh, tissues just won't solve. So, as for this video, we are good to go. The thing starts, it runs. I'm probably going to be looking over it, so there may be some more videos coming out about this thing. Uh, stay tuned if you're a Chrysler fan. Well, stay tuned if you're a car fan in general. I do a lot of Subarus though, so uh, yeah. Anyhow, that's pretty much all she wrote for this thing. Essentially, there's no checking of any sort. It either works or it doesn't. In this case, we are good to go. All we've got to do now is do the ending to this video so I can go home. 
Well, boys and girls, that's all she wrote for this one. Hopefully you found the video entertaining as well as informative. If you did, please hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell so you never miss one of my new videos. And as always, thanks for watching. We will see you in the next one. Or as far as you need to so that your bare gut will care the plant. <laughs> oh, fuck. So before you go ahead and take this whole stupid contraction apart, Contraction. That, my friend, is the 15 bolt or 15 mil head bolt that you'll have to. What the hell did I just say? <sighs> I hold my fucking neck up to do this shit too. It's a pain in the ass. Now, oh, I can't even fucking get my hand in there, but that rusty looking pile of crap on the nubbin. On the nubbin. <laughs> yeah, I can't fucking get that shit. Not like this. Stupid fucking Chrysler. That fucking light is right in my eyes. Get the fuck. Fuck. Come on, you fucking pile of shit. Oh, yeah, all that shit down my fucking sleeve. Chrysler, uh, like many American manufacturers, even though it may be called the Grand... Uh, <laughs> oh, God. Jesus. <coughs> it's about that time when I ask myself, what the fuck am I doing with my life? Okay. You know, mildly retarded or, well, I can't say that. <laughs> because the parts guy was, you know, not that competent that morning or afternoon, whenever you've ordered it, that doesn't fucking matter. You can see this section here is a mis is a theme, thing. What the fuck did I just say? We have enough grease. That's primary. Okay, yeah, I had enough of all. Oh, damn it, I should have run this up somewhere. Well, yeah, go ahead, hit the fucking camera. Where the fuck did I leave that ratcheting ratchet? Son of a bitch. Of course I left it up top. Why would I? Why wouldn't I? Do I got some shit stuck in there? That's not gonna be good. Wow. You are either a real dick or... Oh. There's nothing like a little bit of dust in your eyes to make you feel alive. My fucking clickety camera thingy. I'm gonna shut this thing off. There we go.